Varun, hi, afternoon. Where is it that you uh, stand when it comes to the crude sensitives? We've seen uh, quite a bit of move in the paints, some of the tire names, OMCs as well. Not quite the same for an ONGC or an Oil India, however. Um, but do you sense that this, this is a meaty move and could sustain? Yeah, so first of all, thanks again now for inviting us on this show. When it comes to the crude sensitives, I think... Uh, one number one, we uh, as a house we have a view that we are negative on crude. We think that crude prices will soften further. So I think clearly these will continue to rally. Be it the OMC, be it paints, be it anything related to boost, right? So I am pretty much excited about the opportunity which this is providing. And one one thing you have to remember, right? Everything is falling in place for India as a market. Uh, we are extremely dependent on crude assets also as an economy. So this helps us further on an overall basis also. So this helps the overall market as well. Taken. So that's a view on OMCs. Yes, they have run up quite a bit. Um, but the entire EV plays, those seem to be uh, doing quite well as well. Um, any other theme or any other stocks within that theme, uh, Varun, that you think is still undiscovered or underappreciated? You're trying to say on EV or on, uh, or on the oil? Yes. Which one the entire about? ancillary is right from the battery makers to the OEMs to the entire ecosystem of EVs. Right. So so what is happening is that you're seeing the, seeing a big shift happening now because you saw OEMs doing exceptionally well for the last two, three years in four wheelers and now two wheelers is doing very well. So obviously ancillary is one of the next best bet, next bet, bet to take which people went into. So there has been a decent enough rally in ancillaries also. Uh, honestly, as an overall theme, we are not too bullish right now on autos overall. If anything, we'll be bullish on autos. It'll be to an extent on two-wheelers, which are still doing well, and we expect that run to continue, uh, and to an extent on CVs probably. Not too positive on OMCs, you're not too positive on uh, uh, other autos as well. I will ask you what you're positive on. But before that, a quick look at the market because there seems to be a bit of a selling pressure right now. Not by a whole lot given that we were range bound, but we are at the lowest point of the trading session for what it's worth. So both the Nifty as well as the Sensex have seen a bit of a drawdown. I think Bank Nifty is holding okay. Let's pull up the mid cap and small cap as well and see what they have been up to in the last few minutes. So there has been a bit of a slip when it comes to the... Frontline index, mid cap 2 has a bit cooled off and ditto perhaps can be set for small cap as well. Uh, what's the verdict on this one, Kunal? Is there anything to get worried about the kind of fall that we are seeing right now in the markets or par for the course? Yeah, par for the course, I think the last 10-15 uh, minutes of selling is because of Reliance Industries. That stock uh -huh. has caved into some selling. I think it's dropped some 20-25 points in the last uh, you know few minutes. And I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing the Nifty getting into that uh, you know uh, reversal and for mode. But then nothing major in terms of the sign. This could be a one-off selling for the stock, uh, unless the index breaks past the bow, uh, you know, the breaks past below the twenty-five thousand mark. That I think would be the first, uh, you know, spot of bother for traders who are holding onto long positions. Okay, that's the take coming in on the markets, which definitely are seeing a bit of a shake-off step in or creep in once again. Uh, in the meantime, some of the other stocks which have been in focus and we've been flagging off as well. Uh, definitely have been, uh, you know, the entire oil sensitive pack. We've talked about as to how GICRE as well has seen some more softening come by. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's also been Alembic Pharma. They've uh, received the US FDA approval for one of the tablets. And um, they have a cumulative total now of 214 ENDA approvals come by. There's also Glenmark Pharma. Their U.S. subsidiary has signed a settlement agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice where they're going to be paying about $25 million in six installments over uh, next five years. And then, of course, Sinjin, like we've been flagging off, the management meet with Dam Capital. Uh, the takeaways are extremely strong. The FI25 guidance for now, uh, despite soft uh, Q1, is something that they've managed to maintain. And they do expect a sharp recovery in the second half in terms of revenues as well as profitability. And the Biosecure Act, which is impending, can if it comes through by early next month, that's going to act as a big fillip uh, when it comes to Sinjin. That stock, of course, holding up about three and a half percent as we speak right now. But Varun, uh, where within the market are you finding opportunities to invest in? So I'll just come to that point before I just want to clarify. I mentioned I'm based on crude, not on OMCs. I'm actually positive on OMCs. I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, so 
So I mentioned that crude we think that will slide further from it, which will help all the oil sentiment. So that was number one. Uh, second, when it comes to themes, when I'm positive, I think the one stock which is also a theme in itself is PVR Inox. That's one of the ideas which still leaves massive upsides from here. Uh, one thing which we need to keep in mind: uh, monopoly businesses should have their own multiple, and this says this is lying very cheap at eleven times EV EBITDA, right? Uh, I think there is a sharp, sharp rally which can happen in PVR Inox. Unfortunately, uh, it's been made a content story. I think content over a period of time on a 12-month basis generally plays out to be very well when you compare it year on year, which will keep playing. But uh, this is the only play which you have where people over the weekend have something to do, right? There's hardly any avenues of entertainment that people have in their life uh, as such. So multiplex being one of them, and it's a clear leader in that. I think that's one which we like a lot. This is a very, very high conviction call for us. That is number one. Second, cement is a big theme that we are positive on. Uh, as per our channel checks, we have done uh, quite extensive channel checks around it. And we are hearing that volumes have already started picking up. And uh, one has to keep in mind that uh, monsoons are not yet over. Uh, and also cost in terms of pet coke has been coming off. And crude has been falling further. So it will help pet coke prices further coming off. So that gives further Philip to this entire call on cement as well. So extremely positive on cement. And third, last, uh, lastly, I like the rate sensitives. So in terms of rate sensitives, I'm extremely positive on the uh, NBFCs particularly, uh, where we are very, very positive on Chola and we are very positive on Sriram Finance also from here. So yeah, net, net, this is what we are liking in the markets right now. So cement, some of the rate sensitives, PVR inox and OMCs, uh, these are the spaces that uh, you're liking right now, Varun. Uh, but what about Titan? That one is shining bright in the trading session. Any reason that it should? Yes, absolutely. So Titan, again, we have done extensive channel checks and what we understood from that is that there has been exceptional uh, volumes that they have been seeing. There's been crazy demand on the ground post the budget when uh, we had seen the change in duty, right? So that has helped all of these jewelry players and they're doing very well and that's reflecting in Titan. Plus, uh, there were a lot of fears in the market recently about competition being uh, coming up uh, heavily in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of Titan and, and it might impact them, etc. But when you actually do the on, when you go and speak with dealers on the ground and when you uh, when you try to understand if anything is getting impacted from the, the worries which are there, uh, the sense which we are getting is that people have a complete trust value for Titan and that doesn't change. Uh, it might be more players also coming, but it carries its own brand image and that will remain. So we are very positive on Titan also and we see it as a great play from here as well. In fact, uh, you know, Kunal, I want to get you in on the charts of PVR because that's given a breakout of 4% after I don't know how long. There yeah, are no movies as well, uh, you know, to be released this weekend, which you could link the art performance to, which like Varun was rightly saying, it's been linked as a very content stock. Mm. Good movies, the stock moves up the next day. No, I think if I can relate, then after 3, 2, the stock started to move. I don't know whether that okay, was... Then. Well deserved <laughs> then. I told you watch the movie, it's nice. <laughs> So, yeah, I think on the charts, it's looking, it's starting to look very attractive. You know, the stock had lost its mojo for quite some time when it had corrected from, I think, 2000 or 2200. That was the high the stock had made towards the point very recently the stock made a low, which was around 1270, 1275. Now, there are two important breakouts which the stock has shown on the short term charts. One of them is that the stock breaking past about the 200 DMA, which is a very important breakout because the stock for the last uh, six months, nine months, of that uh, consistent selling had fallen below this critical average uh, you know, for quite some time. So it's, it's been trading below this long to moving average for quite some time. And the other important part is a golden crossover where you've seen the 50 DMA crossing above the 200 moving average. Now both of these put together are very strong technical indicators that a trend is now at place for uh, you know uh, PVR Inox. And what we could be looking out for is not just a, maybe a 10, you know, a 30, 50 pointer pop into the stock price. We could be looking at the stock getting back into a trending mode and potentially retesting even the previous size of 2000 plus.
Okay, point taken. Just wanted to pull up Reliance Industries because that bonus share issue is finally confirmed and announced. Remember, we already knew that the company is going to consider bonus in the ratio of 1 is to 1. They've just informed the exchanges that they've gone ahead and approved that. Um, and that's the latest that is coming in on Reliance Industries. Uh, of course, that isn't the reason why the stock should be down, but just kind of wanted to put it on board that this is the latest that is coming up on um, Reliance Industries. I'm just looking for the record date if they've announced that. Uh, can't seem to find that at the moment, but overall, this is the latest that we are seeing on Reliance Industries, and that's the breaking news for you at the bottom of the screen as well. But shifting focus and getting you an ETI exclusive, and this one is coming in from my colleague Prakash. We understand that the government is planning to build LNG bunkering facility at mega ports in the country. What does it mean, and what exactly is going to be the implication? Prakash, fill us in with the latest. Yes, an important development coming in as we are learning from our sources that the government is planning to build LNG bunkering facility at mega ports in the country. Sources are informing that the oil ministry and the shipping ministry are working on this proposal. In fact, government has held two rounds of meeting with all these stakeholders. Along with that, oil ministry has instructed Gale to prepare feasibility plan. Sources are informing that the government is likely to provide financial support to Gale to develop uh, bunkering facility at mega ports. Uh, and the idea is to uh, supply LNG to international and domestic uh, ships through this uh, bunkering uh, facility. Sources are also informing that the World Ministry is planning to uh, get final cabinet approval on this proposal by December 2024. As per the initial proposal, what the sources are informing that the government is planning to build first LNG bunkering facility in Galatia Bay being developed under Sagar Mala project. Around 58 projects worth Rs. 7,600 crore in Andaman and Nicobar are being monitored under Sagar Mala program and the bunkering facility can also be developed at proposed bulk cargo transshipment hub in Atlanta Bay in Andaman and Nicobar. A very significant development coming in at the sources are informing that the oil ministry has started formal discussion on this proposal. Okay, that's an exclusive piece of info that we're picking up right now. Uh, just looking at the markets, ACC, Sinjin, of course, has climbed up even further now. Bosch, Chola Finance, these are all names which are looking good in the market right now. And of course, I mean, it's the large caps, it's uh, uh, particularly Titan as well as LTIM. But, you know, to talk about... Um, What's really going on with the defense pack? A lot of question marks being raised. Uh, we spoke with Sandeep Tandana earlier today because he, remember, was extremely bullish on the entire PSU pack in defense in particular. And he also voiced the same uh, opinion that they have actually, uh, you know, brought down their exposure in the defense pack. In fact, let's hear out his thoughts and also on the private banks. We have been quite, I will not say bearish, we have been cautious on the banking sector, particularly private sector, because we always believe that derating of the sector has begun globally, okay? So when we talk about derating, uh, derating from a valuation perspective, because we believe banks are the byproduct of leverage economy and leverage economy as a concept is going to deteriorate, okay? And America, US is a very classic example. So multiple data points. Now you look at even India centric, the credit good has been marginal effect. If you look at the one of the largest public sector bank actually talked about 14, 15%. None of the private sector got stocks about this sort of growth coming. So there are challenges on the deposit front, uh, cost of protections uh, or the cost of credit costs has also moved up. So if you really look at it's a combination, we are from a now valuations are always absolute and relative. You know, on absolute terms, people say obviously it is cheap. But looking at relative to other sectors or relative to the global market, I think the perspective is very different. So neither we are very aggressively bullish nor we are bearish. We think at appropriate opportunity in liquid names like private sector names, if I get opportunity in extreme inflection points, I will be buyer and extreme inflection points, I will be seller. So they are no more a core holding for us. They are more of a tactical bets, which we keep on playing. And HDFC was a classic example of that trade. We are in decisive bull run. Maybe this decade belongs to us. Half century belongs to us. But you have to keep in mind that easy phase of bull run is over. But we are in still in bull run and we are in difficult phase. This is a standard statement I generally give perspective to explain. Within the same logic, now get extended to other space. Let's say globally, we believe value as a thesis will, will be a biggest outlier. And Japan is the biggest uh, 
uh, value theme which has played out. And what is very important to understand that all PSUs are part of value thesis. So we remain constructive if I have a decadal view. But if I have a very short term view or horizon when we say when we spotted that is a mild risk of period and I have to reconstruct, I will change. But if market corrects for whatever reason or becomes more volatile, which at least our volatility is very important. And if we do get some opportunity, we will participate in rebuilding these exposure. So from a structure perspective, longer term perspective, we remain very constructive. But from a very near term perspective, we are slightly cautious in this space because given the high beta and we have moved towards low beta. Okay, so that's the latest commentary coming in from Sandeep Tandon as to what's happening with HDFC Bank and a few other uh, important financial names as well. Uh, time now to take the BTSC trades from our technical experts. Naresh, what's the buy today, sell tomorrow idea? First is a buy on PBR Inox. The stock has uh, given a good price volume breakout today, sustaining well. Stop loss at 1570, target price of 1620. Second is a buy on Indian hotels, fresh 52 week high and all time highs here. Stop loss at 667, target price of 685. Okay, point taken. So that's the latest coming in as far as the BTSC trade from the ratio is concerned. Kunal, what about you? So I'll go with the first one, buy on LNT Infodeck Mind Tree, LTIM. That's a chart which is looking uh, attractive in terms of a potential breakout of the previous resistances around 61, 60, 6200 marks, so which suggests the target of 6300 for LTIM and stop loss could be kept at 6050. And uh, Samvadda Madhasan is uh, also coming back into recovery above 190 plus mark. So uh, which suggests that as a buy, targets of 205, stop loss at 190. Okay, point taken. In fact, entire IT pack, let's pull up the Nifty IT and see uh, what it's up to because in my charts, it was showing that it was uh, inching towards the highest point of the trading session. So yes, that's the big move right now on IT. LTI Mind is the top bet from Kunal, but Varun, any IT name that you like, mid cap, large cap? Zero. That was one thing which we were very, very Varun. Just hold on that yeah. thought. Maybe we'll reconnect that. Nuresh, in the meantime, you want to give us your IT top pick? So it continues to remain HCL Tech, which has uh, given a breakout, looks uh, promising, and Infosys on dips because that's the one which has a lot to catch up in terms of relative performance. Apart from that, would wait out for a dip given the rally in some of the mid-cap IT names. Okay, IT definitely has sprung up. The index hasn't quite, still lying a little bit quiet, although that too has seen a smidge of a recovery if we can just uh, bring up the intraday graph while we may be off the, off the day's highs and have fallen half a percent but at least stabilized around the 25,150 odd level or so. IT definitely is uh, catching up, uh, not just LTIM, but a Wipro, you've got Infosys up six tenths of a percent, 8 cell technologies as well, all of these names holding out quite okay. Um, in the meantime, let's just bring up some of the other liquid movers as well and show you what exactly is happening in the market. And on the Lagard side, there are, uh, you know, far too many. You've got a Chumbal Fertilizers, Dixon, BEL, BHEL. That's where you're seeing some short buildup. A HAL as well is seeing some... Uh, you know, pressure, it's down about almost a percent and a half. And then, of course, there are many other names like a Polycab, um, you know, there's uh, Godrej Properties, Godrej Consumer Products, India Cement, Britannia, Granules, a large bunch of stocks which are seeing some profit taking. But I think the trend is also, Kunal, then emerging for the PSU pack. I mean, a BEL, BHEL, HAL. Do you sense that the rally is going to abate a little bit when it comes to the PSU pack? Yeah, there should be a lot of false starts for these stocks because, you know, when these stocks are getting into a zone of consolidation, so, uh, you know, in a consolidation, there is lack of momentum for these stocks. And if there is a sudden, uh, you know, price action jump for these stocks, then that gets, uh, you know, sold into. So traders, they generally tend to lighten up the positions, look at, uh, you know, the near-term resistances as a point where traders look at uh, exiting fresh longs or maybe try to, uh, you know, create some, some fresh short-term, uh, you know, short positions. And then look out for these stocks to come back to their previous support points. That's where the risk reward starts to originate to be a lot more better. So we've gone through the first phase of a price correction for many of these defense names where the high beta ones, they have corrected by 30-35%. The large cap ones have corrected by 15% broadly. And now these stocks should go at least into another couple of months of sideways uh, price consolidation. So would not be uh, looking to venture into a buy unless these stocks come back into a retest of the previous support where the risk reward would start to look uh, a lot more lucrative. Okay, that's the take on some of the defense names. But Varun, if we have you back with us, um, your view on the IT picks? Yeah, I'm sorry. Just to mention, so if you remember, 
in your talk consistently mentioning about uh, IT being amongst our uh, high conviction ideas for the last uh, few months. But that I am uh, changing a bit now. I think there has been a substantial rally in IT pack. Uh, they are uh, beneficiaries of rate cycle and which has already played out in the stocks to quite an extent. I think the sector will go through consolidation. I am not saying it will correct, correct, but uh, stocks would not do too much. If anyone has to buy anything here, should buy the biggest names in terms of BFSI exposure, where emphasis stands as number one, and second is LTI. Okay, that's uh, Varun's pick when it comes to the tech pack. Uh, in the meantime, uh, still seeing some short covering on PVR Inox, on a Gujarat Gas, Exide Industries as well. Idea, where is that stock been up to? Because that's also seeing quite a decent move today. Almost a 2% bump up is what that stock has been seeing. And then Vedanta, which is also holding up about almost 1.6% as we speak right now. Uh, let's get in some BTST trades uh, as well then on that note. We just spoke about that. My apologies. Uh, but uh, uh, Kunal, anything else in terms of a trend that you're drawing up outside the index, but sectorally something that you think is going to maybe rescue the market and move it up to the next leap from here? So, you know, the last one month has been a case where many of the underperformers have made a comeback. Now, you know, the first underperforming sector was uh, the private sector banking names. Few of them have started to make a comeback. The likes of, uh, 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 you know, Indusind Bank has made a comeback of almost 100, 150 points from its recent swing lows. You've seen IDFC First Bank recovering, Bandhan Bank, RBL Bank. These stocks have recovered around 5% to 10% uh, from their recent swing lows. Then you've seen the pain stocks uh, moving up quite well. And, uh, you know, many of these stocks, they were getting back into a, a breakdown kind of a mode for quite some time. So that's a good recovery for many of these names, Asian pains, Berger pains, etc. And now what we're seeing is uh, the specialty chemical stocks, many of these stocks are making a comeback. The last I had seen SRF, uh, you know, uh, as well as many of the other names, they had come back towards a breakout or very close towards a breakout of their June-July swing highs, which means that we are going through a classical phase of sector rotation where the underperforming sectors are now trying to make a comeback. Uh, NBFC, the financial names, they, they were the huge underperformers over the last four or five months. And, you know, this month so far, one of the better performers from the uh, entire NBFC pack is the likes of Bajaj Twins Finance, uh, as, as well as FinServe. You've seen Sriram Finance leading the charge from the front, as well as strong breakouts from Chola Finance, etc. Uh, Varun, I want to get your thoughts in on the specialty chemical space because like Kunal was uh, rightly highlighting, long forgotten or at least has been for the last year, if not more, making a comeback or attempting to. But do you see uh, a meaningful move? Are the fundamentals back in place now or not? So exactly, you know, that, that's what we need to keep in mind. Are the fundamentals really back in it or not? So uh, there's been a couple of start stops, if you see, uh, in the last six months that... There were twice we saw a sharp rally happening and then stocks fizzling out uh, and, you know, uh, halting the rally. I think one has to wait and see how this plays over because China dumping has not stopped yet. So one has to keep that in mind. So till the time that doesn't happen, uh, stocks are already priced to perfection. I think uh, uh, once China stops dumping in the world, I think that's when you will start seeing something, some respite coming to earth. Till that time, I would probably stay away from more speciality names here. But UPL is actually doing quite well um, and has been for the last couple of days. That value unlocking that the company talked about in one of their arms is something which has got the street excited. But what's up with Prestige? I think Prestige Brigade, these couple of names actually did uh, raise some funds in QIP, etc. But what's the top bet within real estate, if any, Varun? It is a top pick for us. Uh, it's clearly uh, one of the finest names. They the, the beauty about the company is they give a conservative guidance and they keep outperforming over it. Uh, also, this money which comes into both uh, uh, Brigade and Prestige, it will help them acquire further projects and uh, uh, further land bank comes in and you will have that multiplier of growth over it. So, I think clearly they stand as great picks over here. One can clearly look to buy them. Okay, so that's the latest coming in as far as this entire real estate pack is concerned. But for the markets right now, it's been fairly sideways. I'm just taking stock of what the rates are coming in from the US right now because um, 
the pre-market rates for now are a bit sideways so you have Dow which is up 40 points Nasdaq is a bit lower in the trading session uh, you do have oil that continues to be around that $73 per barrel and the European markets too are pretty sideways at that uh, DAX being just uh, flat and the French CAC down half a percent if you like this video then like share and subscribe to ET now